So I mean, you investigate yourself new theories, going, taking some of Eric's ideas, I understand, uh, and your own. And as you mentioned earlier, in your, your favorite model, there is still a particle in there. Yes, at least you could interpret it this way. So um, I have not written a paper with Eric, but I read <laughs> the paper, or I tried to read it. <laughs> um, and while I was reading the paper, I was reminded of a passage from uh, Steven Weinberg's book, Dreams of a Final Theory, where he describes that there are two types of theoretical physicists. There are the seers and the mystics. And the seers are the ones who uh, make an argument straightforwardly, go from A to B to C, and everything, one follows after the other, and you can very easily follow their argumentation. And the mystics, they assemble a cloud of facts which they lay out, and then a miracle happens, and out comes the result. And I think that Eric is definitely of the second kind. <laughs> And I had a hard time making sense of the paper, so I set out to try to put this into a more digestible form. And I found, interestingly, two things. One is that he says uh, he needs to start with dark energy and then dark matter is a consequence from this. So I find that uh, if you try to write it down in a rigorous mathematical way, you actually get both together. So you do not, you do not need to start with assuming that dark energy is there, but they are both um, parts of the same story. Eric, did you not write e it down in a rigorous mathematical way? <laughs> is there something you need to fix? Um, there's a starting point. I mean, I mentioned this, uh, that if you want to really make things mathematically rigorous, we. Uh, we haven't found a model yet for our actual universe with positive dark energy. The people that are working in my field work, have to work in this fictitious universe with a negative cosmological constant to be mathematically rigorous. But mathematical rigor or very medical, medical precise things can sometimes be um, even cons too constraining. So I laid out a number of ideas and assumptions and from there on I started reasoning, I think mathematically precise in the sense that the steps are mathematically precise. But I have to make also some hypothesis in there which I'm motivated from a certain intuition. So physics cannot be started from no assumptions at all and then just reasoning. You have to make some uh, hypothesis and then continue and then that sense uh, what I wrote down is mathematically precise but it's based on certain uh, assumptions. Now one could be forgiven for thinking, okay, 20 years ago we could have had a very similar debate, not quite the same, we didn't have Eric's theory for example 20 years ago, but nonetheless there was evidence for dark matter, cosmological evidence, evidence based on the fact that, on that uh, uh, how light bends uh, in, uh, under gravitational influence and also already somewhat, we didn't really touch on it very much, uh, uh, on dark matter evidence and cosmic microwave background and early structure formation of the universe, which also uh, touches onto the dark energy side a little bit. So, uh, why haven't we moved on? Rabina. Um, yes, I'm happy to say something about it, but I feel like I should add something here because I think that some of you might be missing a piece of the story because up to now you might have gotten away with the impression that Eric's model actually explains it all, so why are we even discussing this? <laughs> the point is, of course, that it does not. There are some observations that at least it presently cannot explain. For example, the structure that we see in a cosmic microwave background. This is just uh, something wh at for which particle dark matter works very, very well, but that at least presently cannot be explained with modified gravity. And there are also some problems with other observations. So um, th this is why there is still a debate in the community, right? So just one is ought to be on the same table. Um, now the issue about um, why we haven't made progress um, one of the reasons why this hypothesis of particle dark matter became so wi widely adapted was that um, 30 years ago or so, theoretical physicists had a lot of other reasons to believe in the existence of additional particles that conveniently enough also could make up dark matter. For example, there, there's an extension of our current theories that is called supersymmetry, in which you get a lot of additional particles, some of which just have the right properties to uh, make up dark matter. And this certainly lends a lot of credibility to this hypothesis. Now, um, people have looked for these particles since the mid-80s with increasingly higher precision, you know, built lar larger detectors um, and uh, better apparatuses, and they haven't found any. 
And now the most recent round of experiment just uh, concluded, and I think there's now you know some sense in the community where people are asking themselves, how far do we really want to push this? Like, do we want to continue building larger and larger detectors forever, trying to hope to find this particle which may not even be there? Did you know that the Institute of Arts and Ideas also has a podcast? Philosophy for Our Times brings you the biggest ideas from the leading thinkers around the world every week. Search for Philosophy for Our Times and subscribe today on your favourite podcast platform, SoundCloud or iTunes to make sure you never miss an episode.